ladies and gentlemen, my name is Pratik. I'm working in Intel, uh, mostly on corporate projects. And my talk is about recent changes that we have done in core boot for multiprocessor initialization with, with respect to some of the restricted feature programming. So we're going to go through that and how the community can use it. So the agenda goes something like this. Uh, some of the overview of the MP initialization and the basic flow of core boot and Intel FSP. Uh, this just to set up the problem statement so that people can understand what was the problem. What are the solutions available? What we chose, uh, the design of it, and feature scope. So uh, starting with P6 family in mid 90s, Intel has uh, released a specification for MP initialization. The flow is defined very well in the STM that anybody can go and refer. I don't want to spend time going through all of it. We can go through it. I'm going to go to the main problem. But basically, uh, it divides the programming into BSP and AP. The buzz arbitration or the system dynamically chooses one processor as BSP. Everything goes on the BSP, and then the BSP would program the rest of the APs. Um, but I can go through the STM for the whole control, whole flow. Um, now, just to make everyone on the same page, I'm going to go through this slide a little bit in detail. Uh, so core boot or BIOS, any, any BIOS, sits on the research vector typically, and it can call into FSPT for time per minute. Uh, by the way, core boot has its own time per minute code. Um, then, FS, then the core boot can call into uh, FSPM to do the memory training. Tear down as typical, and then core boot does the MP init here, and then it calls into FSPS for silicon initialization, and then bunch of notify phase depending upon the platform. Uh, so this is the typical flow so that people can understand what's going on. Now uh, the problem arises here with the recent, uh, the, the latest CPUs is that Intel has introduced something called uh, SAI, security, uh, arbitrator initiator. Um, so, so that has to secure the platform, but, but it imposes some of the uh, restriction in the programming flow. Um, so in that, uh, so basically FSPS has to program certain registers, and then some of the uh, restricted CPU programming would be done. And then before exiting FSPS, it has to lock the other registers, um, and then if you have to do those uh, uh, feature programming before FSPS or after FSPS, it's not uh, possible as of now. Um, and we want everything to be open source, um, and we want to have those features. So, so basically, that was the problem. Um, so due to this SAI, some of the feature programming can't be done before FSPS and even after FSPS. So within the FSPS, there's a small window where those programming can be done, and those features are mainly Intel SGX, uh, C6 DRAM. Uh, those are the cool uh, features for power saving as well as uh, security. Um, so uh, after Canon Lake and onwards, those features uh, has that typical uh, the restricted flow that we have to follow. Now to have these features as well as to uh, make the things open source, uh, we have proposed something. And there were a couple of uh, solutions on the table. Um, so let me go through it and explain what it is. So number one is uh, Coreboot would do the MP initialization, because Coreboot has very cool uh, MP init flow, which is open source. Um, that's a good thing. But the problem is uh, from Canon Lake onwards, uh, we can't have the SGX or the C6 DRAM feature. If we do the MP need before and then call FSPS, because FSP has to lock certain registers in that flow. Uh, <clears throat> the other option is uh, core boot can or any bias can skip the MP in it in itself and let FSP do the all job. So FSP would do the MP initialization, and as a part of MP initialization, it would uh, do the restricted CPU feature programming. But the problem is uh, we are going to. Uh, miss the core boots uh, open source MP init flow. Um, and again, in the notes over there, it says what kind of config you can use to select each of the options. Uh, 
but to get the best of the both worlds, we have proposed the third solution, that is uh, implement PPI, uh, it stands for PIM to PIM interface. Uh, if you guys are from EDK2 background, you can see FSP typically uses the EDK2 infrastructure and it has the funda fundamentals of the PIM. Now, uh, we can have this PPI, which basically it is nothing but a, a list of function pointers. We can pass it to FSP and then FSP can use core boots, MP init to do the restricted uh, feature programming. Uh, we are, so the whole talk is about this. We're gonna go through the design and, and how the flow works. Uh, the good thing with this uh, approach is that we the core boot can do the MP initialization as core boot is doing as of now. And on top of that, we let FSP use core boot's MP init infrastructure to do the restricted feature programming. Um, and to use that uh, option, you can set this config flag. Uh, the good thing is code is already upstream, it's already merged, so it, you can use it even as of today. Uh, basically, it, it is with FSP 2.1 uh, spec. So the, let's go through the design. So in nutshell, there are basic three things. Uh, very simple, create the MPPPI interface, give that interface pointer to FSP and let FSP execute it, uh, as simple as possible. Now what is that PPI? Uh, so basically, uh, the, the PI specification says that there are seven functions that uh, anybody has to implement to provide that PPI interface. Two of them are optional, so we have implemented five of them. Um, basically, it says number of processors, uh, how to get the processor information, these are the two main routines that is mostly used. Uh, that is using core boots MP run on APs uh, callback. So, so how it works is, let's say if core boot uh, or FSP has to do uh, SDX feature programming, core boot will call these APIs and pass on its own function pointer and execute uh, those routines. It's, it's that simple. Um, either on BSP or all the cores. Now, you can follow this branch to see the whole uh, sequence and a bunch of review comments uh, how this design was uh, evolved. Now, let's go to the flow. As you know, uh, boot block, ROM stage, RAM stage we have with the core boot. Uh, here we're gonna record the events. So core boot would still do the MP in it uh, as it does right now. Um, and then we fill the FSPS UPD parameters. We, we call into FSPS, this Intel FSPS. FSP and uh, FSPS would do the silicon initialization. This is uh, the current flow. Um, and then what extra we have to do is we have to create the MP PPI APIs over there, pass the uh, function pointer in the FSPS, and the name of the UPD parameter is uh, CPU MP PPI. Now, FSP would do its own protocol for, uh, for PPI. It will typically install the PPI, locate it whenever it is time to do the feature uh, initialization, and it would call into core boot again to do the feature programming. So, so remember those APIs that we have passed? It, one, of the, one of the API was to uh, execute some function on all the APs or selected AP. So core boot would, uh, sorry, FSP would call those APIs and pass its own function pointer to do the feature programming. So this is the main flow that I had. And in future, uh, so we can extend the same idea for other functionalities. We can maybe make FSP to uh, use inter, uh, the core boot's uh, debug library to prints its own debug messages into CBMAM. Uh, that might be useful. Uh, if someone has access to FSP debug, uh, we can at least try that option. So this is the this idea that we have in mind. Um, and any other suggestions uh, the community has, it's kind of welcome. We can see how we can incorporate that to make use of uh, this infrastructure. That is it, I had to talk. Um, any questions? Uh, yeah, thank oh. you. Uh, please queue up at the mics again. Uh, 
Uh, hi. Uh, I don't really know anything specific about this architecture. I'm just curious from hearing this. Uh, why can't you just add the new uh, register setup that you need to do for the Comet Lake to the Cobwood MP init code? Uh, do you know the logic of FSP, right? A lot of the registers are restricted. Uh, company considers it at a, a confidential or secret, top secret. So some of the registers are not uh, publicly available. That's why FSP does a lot of programming. But with the latest uh, SAI uh, configuration to secure the platform more, the, it imposes a lot of uh, restriction in the boot flow. So we have to lock certain register first and then do the feature programming. And before FSPS leaves, we have to you know, do certain other programming. Then only things would work. Otherwise, if you skip that window, then those features won't get enabled. So that's a restriction in the programming. That that's a recommendation. So now to so overcome. So you're saying the registers get locked when FSP is running. Yeah. But you could still do it before you run FSP, right? No, but to initialize those registers, they're like two set of cyclic dependencies. So you can't just do before FSP as either for this particular scenario. Yeah, this is the specific restriction beyond Canon Lake associates. Okay. Canon Lake as um, Ice Lake or feature. So just to overcome that, uh, we provided one more interface, let FSP use core boot infrastructure, and when it's a time to execute the feature programming, it would call into FSP, uh, uh, core boots, MPP, uh, APIs to do the feature programming. Because core FSP really can't do its own. Uh, they need to have the PIM interface to do the initialization. So we have the most of the things open source as we like. And please uh, send out your suggestions uh, if you want to see something more in this particular area. Um, you can see my contact detail here and my colleague's contact detail. Um, really like to implement new features here. Any questions? All right, then thank you very much.